Hi everyone, it's your girl Jennifer here again with a very interesting video and if you're new, you're most welcome to this platform where we talk about things related to mental health and how mental health affects our health and our life. So today, I want us to talk about this thing about the African community and their view and take on low skill jobs. Have you been in that place? Yes. And I don't think it's just the African society and the African setup, but I believe there are people who have a certain bias or negative attitude towards low skilled jobs. Regardless whether of whether somebody is qualified, like has the academic backing, but having to work in a low skill job for one reason or another, or when somebody just by academic uh, qualifications or reasons, they cannot find themselves any other place other than on a low skill job. So that is what I want to talk about. Now, our from my Kenyan education and from the years, the education system has just changed in the last year or so in Kenya to adopt a new way of doing things. But for me, growing up, we used the system that was called the 844 system. I beg to be corrected if I'm wrong, but what I feel the 844 system prepared me for, it prepared me more for to, to finish school and be employed in a white collar job or a white collar position. And I have seen in my Africanness that most of the time and most of the people who leave school, they are always looking for white collar jobs. And when you do not get these white collar jobs, it becomes very frustrating for you. And I'm that kind of uh, one person who had to go through that because uh, if you have watched my other videos, I've talked about how I left college, I left high school, and immediately even before my results were out, I, will, I went to a graphic school. And in the graphic school, I did a graphics course. I was good at it, but I never got myself any formal employment. So, fast forward. Many years later, I decided to go to Dubai. And I go to Dubai because it's easy to get jobs in Dubai and low skill jobs in that matter for that uh, for that matter so i went to dubai and i went to dubai i didn't go with an agency because there are people who go to dubai with agencies that get them jobs from your home country so you just go there already with a ready job but for me i went to do what is called tamaking so went there made cvs of all kinds and had and finally i got myself a job I got myself a housekeeping job. Yes, a housekeeping job. But that's the fancy name that I want to give it, a housekeeping job. But in reality, it was a cleaning job. Yes. So I got myself a cleaning job in the Dubai Metro. We were the first people who ever worked for the Dubai Metro. All my friends here who we've worked together in Dubai, hi. Yeah, so, yes, we worked for the Dubai Metro. I'm always very proud of that achievement because we, we were the first people to work for the Dubai Metro. It was a new thing, not just in Dubai, but all over the world. So it was clearly a very nice experience. So let's go back to these low-skilled jobs and everything. So it was a cleaning job. And a cleaning job, definitely... Most of the cleaning jobs are for people who are not educated, even like you don't need any basic education, regardless of whether you went to school or not went to school. Some of these low skilled jobs, anybody can do them. If you're just trained, as long as you have a brain that can capture something or conceptualize something, then you can do it. So this cleaning job was a no brainer. But there were skills that were very important that we had to be trained on. For example, it was a new technology. Uh, we adopted, you had to learn to use uh, different machines to clean because uh, 
let me give you a little bit of insight on what we were doing so that you understand how it's a low skill job but it needed some specific skills for example uh how the stations the dubai metro stations used to be cleaned they used to be deep cleaning and it was done in the night and it wasn't done by everybody the deep cleaning of the windows the deep cleaning of the station the deep cleaning of the trains themselves the cleaning of the offices deep cleaning of the toilets and everything the machines where you'd do the ticketing they and remember there's a lot of fl uh, traffic of people so the cleaning had to be seven star that time when i went and joined dubai metro the world was moving from five star level of things because it's at that before that time there are five star hotels five star cleaning five star so five star used to be like the best of the best but then at that time things upgraded to seven star which was higher than five star so our duties needed to be seven star because Dubai is a highly touristic uh, country and therefore they needed to maintain a certain standard, a very high standard. So from the machines that were being used, the equipment, the cleaning detergents, the cleaning materials and the cleaning experience like you the cleaner doing it, how you are supposed to do it, you were supposed to do it at seven star level. So we had to be trained and in this training of seven star that's where now expertise came in because uh, depending on how you how well you did during the training that's how you were apportioned where you would go so but most of the boys or men had to go and do the the heavy machine work so uh, it was very rare for women and ladies uh, to do the machine work, to handle machines and clean with machines. But also the equipment that you needed that was not high tech also needed a level of expertise. So, yeah, so we were trained and we always, we got released to the stations depending on how good you had mastered the classwork. So, yeah, so for me, I, I do my training, do it very fast. I get uh, given to be to, to go to, I am assigned a station. I remember back in those days, we had permanent stuff, like if there's a train station, uh, like, um, do I remember the names? Yes, like Jafilia. Yeah, I think there was one called Jafilia. There was the Dubai Mall station. There was... There were different Emirates small station. I don't know if these are still the names they use today, but yeah, those were the names then. And not all the stations were operational. There were some that were needed to be cleaned, but the train never used to stop and people bought from those stations. But still, they had to be kept clean 24 hours. It was a 24-hour system. So we worked in different shifts. So... You used to have people who are permanent in, in certain stations, but we had other people. So we had team leaders, we had the permanent staff, and we had people who are called relievers. If you were met, if you are supposed to be, if you became or were chosen to be a reliever, it means you're very good in your, uh, at your job. You do not have to work in a specific station. You can work in different stations because you 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 have known you can apply those skills despite some stations being bigger than others others having some different uh, places because there are others where the boarding was only on ground floor there are others that uh, the boarding would be on first floor or maybe the arrivals would come on first uh, on the ground floor then the departures would be on the first floor so they had two different dynamics so if you are a reliever if you're chosen to be a reliever it means it meant they had access to and realized you're so good to be able to do that so for me i was chosen to be a reliever it was a good thing to be a reliever it was also a bad thing to be a reliever being a reliever is because you didn't have a permanent station so any day you could be here today, you, tomorrow's shift is somewhere else. Sometimes you don't like that. It's, it's nice when you have a regular place to be. But anyway, 
for me, I was in Dubai for work and for money, really. I wasn't there for anything else. So I didn't mind to have a permanent station or just to be everywhere. Yeah, so so I was a reliever. I uh, worked. Uh, I was. I worked in Dubai for two years. So this was a low-skilled job, but with very high expertise needed in how to clean. That time again, it was a time where in the world they had just uh, started. I wouldn't call it invented, but I would say they had started producing. Are these microfiber clothes that are used today to clean? I remember that was a time they came like really to the market and they were really expensive at that time. Cleaning the Dubai Metro, we needed to we used the microfiber. And the reason why we used to use the microfiber is because that there's a sense behind how a microfiber cloth works. Because apparently they say if this is that and this is a microfiber cloth. When you put it here as you're cleaning, it attracts that to itself. And it looks cliche or it looks like, how does that work? But when you go and use it uh, like to clean clearly, yes, for me, I know it used to work. And it used to work hand in hand with, 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 the, uh, with the detergents because we had color codes of detergents, uh, pink detergents or red detergents were for toilets, blue were for kitchens, uh, green were for, uh, no, blue were for general areas. So we had all these color codes and you, ha you could never use the wrong color code, both with the cloth and with the detergent and also with mops. It was like a very kind of sophisticated way of cleaning, but it had to be done. And the one thing I remember from my years of working and working in this housekeeping position is they told us and they trained us in training that the station has to be spotlessly clean 24 hours regardless of the traffic and regardless of the weather. Whether it's raining, whether it is a sunny day, whether it is a... Um, uh, a very hot day, whatever it was, you would you you were not supposed to find that station like not clean. For example, if you stand on one end of the station, you were supposed to see the next end, the very other end of the station, and you should sit as clean. You shouldn't be able to see a mark. If any supervisor came and found a mark on any part of either the floor, the wall, or anywhere, that would be a problem. For me, I come from Kenya. And in Kenya, how do we work? I work two hours, I have a boss, he comes and wonders why I'm sitting down, and I'm thinking, what are you telling me? I can sit down, I can rest, I'm tired. Hey, I went to Dubai, shock on me. You only sit down at your break time. I thought it was very brutal. Unfortunately, that is how life is. I'm in the West right now. It is the same thing. You, When you go to work, you only sit down during your break. And even if you're doing a job where you, you're supposed to sit down other than stand, you will... Stop doing like if you're on the computer, you'll be on that computer. Find something to do on that computer until it's your break time when you can relax. But other than that, you need to be working. So, uh, we used to be told, if you have cleaned from end A to end B and it is clean, start again. Redo it. Keep on doing that. At the end of the day, it is a 24-hour station. You know. And then there's something that used to be called spillage. Spillage is in case somebody's coming to the train station, they have trees, they spill it on the floor, they spill crepes, they spill. I don't know how they expected us to work magic. But if you are on the concourse and somebody is on the platform, maybe A, and the spillage happens on platform A and you're on the concourse, which is like on, the, on a different side of the train station, your head should know. It's like they needed us to know that something has just happened. 
And because they used to have cameras all over the station and we used to have people called station masters who, had, who used to man the cameras, in case they see any small thing, they will alert you quickly. That mess should be cleared from there within, like, there should be no chance of anybody noticing there was a mess. And passengers were not allowed, you know, like the way you can, you can spill something, then you feel, oh, this is, I've done something wrong. And maybe if you have a tissue, you clean it. No, that was not the work of passengers. It was you, the cleaner, you're supposed to do that. And you're supposed to do it the right way. You have to come with the boards, say cleaning in progress, because should an accident happen because of your carelessness, it will do it it will not land you in the best places there's also this thing because this the, uh, this was all all a new technology and everything was happening so fast so as you know like when you're building new buildings it is up until you start using them that you find uh like you can find their leaks their cracks here and there so anytime they would open a station and maybe something happens you'd find maybe like uh, because Dubai is a very hot country, so sometimes I would put the AC on to a certain level, then I think sometimes, or when the climate outside is too hot, then there's the way in the ceiling somehow, uh, the system would want to cool itself, but it may end up cooling itself and cause the, the is it the ceiling or something to start uh, sweating, and therefore will leak water. If that happens as well, that should be sorted out within a blink of an eye. You see, in the toilets, we used to be told that toilets should be toilets where you can go sit down and eat in the toilet. I have seen that happen for real. You, I don't... I do not know how people eat in public toilets, but in Dubai you could eat in a public toilet because the cleaning we used to do, my friends, it used to be top notch. You couldn't find hair. <laughs> this is a place I also want to laugh because for me being an African, our hair doesn't fall off when we, we are combing. And if it does, it's very little. But with people, the Asians, the the British, Americans, these people with this kind of hair, it falls like naturally. So when they go to the to the bathroom and you know when they want to freshen up their hair or even touch it with water, some hair will definitely go to the floor. So that used to be to happen a lot in the ladies' bathrooms. But I promise you, they should never find hair on the floor, even one. You need to be there always, money. So you need to be everywhere checking what is happening, what is happening. The other beautiful thing and interesting thing is, do you see how you open a tap of water and wash your hands? There was sinks and the tap should never be wet. It should always be sparkling clean however many times people are using it so when when i tell you this you think like wow it was so miserable working there no no it wasn't it wasn't miserable so that was my life as as, as a housekeeper did it our shift used to start at 6 a.m definitely you have to wake up at three go for parade one day I'll talk about how we used to do all this. But yes, we used to wake up at 3, go for parade, uh, get assigned your stations, then get transported through uh, company buses and start the, uh, the shift at 6, finish the shift at 3 o'clock. Then by the time we finish our shift, the afternoon shift guys are coming in. By the time they finish their shift from 3 to 11, the night shift guys are coming in. So that's how we used to work. We used to have three shifts, the morning shift, afternoon shift, and night shift. And all these shifts, the cleaning dynamics are different because how the afternoon uh, will work will be slightly different from the morning shift and what the morning shift might experience might be different from here yeah, so that the dynamics were a bit different but it was all or less supposed to be always seamless and most of the time it was so let me stop the story here and just come back to this low-skilled 
job mentality that many people have. I have heard very many people talk about how can somebody leave their country, Kenya, oh, where you are boss in a bank, you are a, bo a bank manager, and now you, you go to, to, to the West, you're a taxi driver, now you're a cleaner, or now you're going to work in a hotel to be a housekeeper changing beds and beddings. My friend, if that is the mentality you have towards life, I don't know how far you will go in life. Because for me, that is a very naive, let me use that word, naive way of looking at life. I am not talking about this to blow my own trumpet or to impose my thoughts on you. But this is the general thing. If you, you're, you're you, you are an open-minded person. This is the reality behind uh, this kind of jobs. For example, from my experience of working for the Dubai Metro, today, when it comes to me cleaning, even my own house, places I am in, being neat, the skills I apply today are the skills I learned while working at the Dubai Metro. I have told you that I had this attitude I know, like when you go to to a job, if you're tired, you do something for a few minutes, you're tired, you have to take a break. No. It set me up uh, for what happens in the real life and in the real world. In the real world, people who care about their money, they are always watching what their money is doing. So if I have employed you to do an eight hour job and within the eight hours, you have a one hour break, I need my eight hours accounted for. And that's where I realized that sometimes we have people who cheat their employers big time. And in Africa, to be, to be very sincere, and in Kenya in particular, because I've seen this happen a lot, people cheat their employers. And you find even businesses getting run down because people are not even accountable. You see? And so, and there are no clear working conditions, you're not even equipped for that job because for us to be able to work, they had given us enough uh, materials, they had given us everything we needed to equip us and prepare us for this kind of a job. So, you wouldn't go to work and say, oh, we are missing this or we are missing this. No, it was a 24-hour station and economy. You see, so I ended up, I ended up being set uh, for life and uh, being set for life at an advantage because today, as much as I'm not doing that job anymore, but the skills I learned, uh, there's this thing that people used to do, um, uh, cleaning the train used to be called sweep cleaning. So when the train comes and, and when people get down, and before the people go into the train, the cleaners have 60 seconds to clean tr the train from point A to point B. So, and the, the, the train could have like five or six carriages. So, the cleaner, when he starts on the one end of the carriage, will go to the other end within that one minute because it is timed. Immediately after their minute is gone, the doors of the train will automatically open for the passengers to go in. And you cannot be cleaning when the passengers are boarding. You will cause confusion. And these uh, trains were driverless. So they come, open, the cleaner to go in, clean, open, people to go in. Within a minute, the doors close again and the train leaves. So, you see, you have to be really, really efficient for you to be able to do this within the window you have. And in that time of cleaning, remember, you might find a spillage, you might find somebody who's been sick on the train and has vomited, and you still need to clean it and you use the cleaning procedure that is supposed to be done, but within that one minute. You see, because if, 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 and if anything was found in the train that could not be cleaned within that one minute, the train had to be called off. 
and they never liked to call off trains because it would cause delays. Time is money, right? So, so that taught me a lot of efficiency. It taught me speed. It taught me how to plan my work. It taught me responsibility that I could never have learned anywhere else. But let me tell you something. When we were working in that position, were we looked down on by people? Yes. Some of the station masters looked down on us. Some of our team leaders looked down on us. And some, some of them are not even as learned as you who is doing this job. Because we had people who had their degrees working with us, you know. But they are, we were looked down on by people. There are passengers that who came and they would look down on you. They would do something silly so that they can, after all, there's a cleaner here. We experienced all that. But that deter me from working there? No. But today when I look back, I have, uh, I am now, uh, I run my own mental health company. But today I have had, uh, I have had to employ people in the company. I've had to do a lot of things. The experience I had dealing with people at that time when I was a cleaner and how I was treated clearly has opened my eyes. There's a way and there's a level of integrity I have. I would never treat anybody less uh, because of their position uh, and look down on them because I know what it means to be looked down on. So, how does, uh, why do we in Africa have this kind of a mentality? It's because it's been put to us somewhere, either through the education system or through our ignorance sometimes or through our great upbringing to, 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 to think like just because somebody is doing a low skill job, it's like they are daft. No. Just the fact that you're doing a low skill job does not mean you don't have integrity, does not mean you're, you're not intelligent. So, uh, to, to be able to better the world, let's know that uh, having a low skill job does not equate, is not equivalent to lack of integrity and lack of intelligence. That is number one. The other thing is that the skills that you acquire in a low skill job, these are skills that are life changing. They can, you can transfer them and use them anywhere. They set you at an advantage, uh, at an advantageous place uh, in life. The other thing I want to mention is focus on what's strong and not what's wrong. If you have your degree and you have to do a low skilled job, what's wrong is that you do not you can't get a job in your field. But what is strong, you have skills that you can use. Uh, it will give you an income. It will it will set you up in a better place in life. Focus on that. Focus on what is strong and leave what is wrong. The other thing, fail fast, fail quick. If you're going to do low-skilled jobs and probably you are, uh, whether you learn it or not, some of these low-skilled jobs have their challenges. If you have to move from one job to another, do it quickly until you're able to find where you fit. Because time is not waiting for you. Today, if you told me to go and do a cleaning job, yes, I will do it. But will I do it for a year, two, three, four years? The answer is no. Why? I'm not young. I'm getting older. I don't have the speed I used to have when I went to Dubai. I was much younger. So, fail fast, fail quick. Even in business, it is it is the same uh, uh, principle. If you're starting businesses or you're not sure what you're doing, Whatever you do, fail fast, fail quick, so that you find yourself quickly before you run out of time. At 60, 70, you can't be trying to experiment on things that you should have experimented in when you are in your early years, you see. And so, the other last thing I would want to mention, you will never be an effective or efficient leader if you do not understand what happens down there. Today, I believe my leadership skills have been informed by the opportunities I got working in the Dubai Metro as a as a cleaner. I know how to I know how to deal with the topmost people. I know how to deal with the bottommost people. I know how the top bottom relationship works because I have been there. I have experienced it. So, 
when these opportunities come your way, if you're a parent today listening to me and you have children, do not stop them from doing low skill jobs because their skills and there's an experience they will get to get that you can never expose them to unless they come to that place. Some people who lack respect for people today is because they have not been in such, in such places and in such situations. But if you expose them to such situations, they will appreciate people who are down. They will realize sometimes people are not down because they wanted to be down or they did something wrong to be down there. Some circumstances can make you find yourself there. Have you heard when they say the rich also cry? Aha, uh -huh. so you know. Now, if you know all that, I hope you are going to take action and you are going to change the narrative about the perception about low-skilled jobs. To change the world, you need to change your mind. It's your girl Jennifer. This is Against All Odds. See you on the next video. Bye.